It's Tuesday. Are you ready to dare to build a brave and creative life? I hope you are. Because today I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that in Big Ideas and Books. This is Yvonne DeVita, your Big Idea Facilitator. And nurturing Big Ideas book review this week is with Joy Mangano. Okay. Her book is Inventing Joy. And I can... I, this was one of, if not, it, right now, it's among the top three books in my entire life that I have read for business, for women in business or creating a small business or becoming a solopreneur that is spot on, that is inspirational, and that just gets you where you want to be. She is so relatable. She is so smart. I, I, first of all, I love the title, Inventing Joy. And we all know who she is, don't we? She's the inventor of the Miracle Mop. And I don't have a Miracle Mop, but that's beside the point. I've always thought about getting one. I don't like to mop the floor very much. I kind of give that to my husband to do. But, but the story is about that, not about that. It's very much a story. She takes us on a wild and exciting journey into entrepreneurship. That's what I'm telling you. And she says, dare to build a brave and creative life. And isn't that what I've been telling you all along? Isn't that what I've said Nurturing Big Ideas is about? That brave, creative life. We know you have creativity. We know you have talent. We know you are making magic every day. Let's turn it into money. So she has some light bulb moments. And she has some great stories. And I want to share some of them with you. And if, if you do nothing else after this, go to her website and, and check it out and check out her and just understand she really does embody what we teach. She really does want you to succeed the same as I do. So once upon a time, this is a once upon a time moment. And I say this to people, I say, when you're telling the story of you, and your business is you, which you'll see uh, later on is what she says also. When you're doing that, it's important to make it a story. Her story begins. One night, when I was 10 years old, I saved my dog, Duke. He was um, in their backyard, there was a lake or a pond and he had fallen through the ice and she ran out there and she got him out and she brought him in and, and, and um, dried him off. And she was going to nurse him back to health because he cut his paws on the ice trying to get out. What did she do? She bandaged them. She had to change the bandages frequently. Duke didn't like the bandages. So she thought to herself, there has got to be a better way. And the better way was a sock with bandages in it, with gauze. And the interesting thing is back in, I don't know, 2000, maybe 1999, I had a dog that had a lick granuloma, which is um, a sore on their leg that they never stop licking and just gets bigger and bigger and becomes infected. And nothing worked. No bandages worked. Nothing worked. And I resorted to a sock. And it worked. The sock prevented the dog from um, licking at the leg, and boom, the leg got better. It had a huge scar by then because it was a long time before I thought of it. God bless Joy for thinking of it right away. So I, I just, again, I want to point out the moral of the story here is that. Um, your life is a story. Excuse me, I have to put my phone on buzz because I forgot. But your life is a story, isn't it? It's about this that you did or that. It's, it's about things that as a young girl, 
you said, I like taking pictures. I like writing stories. I like sewing. I like knitting. I want to be something more than just whatever it is that society might have told you you should be. Tell us the story. I know you have them. We can talk about how to relay them and how to tell them if you like, but they're there. You need to uncover them. And this is the beautiful Joy. And she is beautiful, isn't she? She talks about being defiant. This is where my being a wayward woman thing comes in. And I think you should be wayward. I think it's a good thing. I have a sign in my office that says, um, home of the wayward woman, uh, making bad girls better, because that's what they thought back in the day, that if you were wayward, you were a bad girl, and if you were a bad girl, they had to make you better. Not true. So she says, I managed to defy a lot of conventional wisdom, and I developed my own set of truths. Today, these truths are my core principles. They are what I live by each and every day. And that's what we build. And that's what we create when we dare to be brave. So she, she has a blueprint. She calls it her blueprint for a more joyful life. Now, inventing joy, joyful life. It's what we all want, a more joyful life. And this part, this part can't be in big enough um, print, but it wouldn't have fit if I made it any bigger. So let me read it out loud. My brother would always say to me, you should have been born a boy. I understood what he meant, that boys build things like rocket ships, not girls. Girls don't build rocket ships. They sew things, I guess. That's kind of the, what they taught us in school when I was a young girl. And Joy says, but what can I say? I just wanted to build rocket ships. Are you building rocket ships? Are you defying society and mom or brother or whomever? Get out there and do it. Now, just because something has never been done is no excuse not to do it. That's kind of how I put it. She says that the essence of creative life is carving your own path. And joy begins the moment you decide to discover yourself. I, I like that. Joy begins the moment you decide to discover yourself. You decide, you make the choice, and you discover. We women of a certain age, and it could be anyone from 25 to 95, sometimes we have let society beat us down or turn our head, because this is what you should do. You're good at this, so go out and get a job and do it. Maybe not, maybe you need to discover yourself and take that wonderful talent you have and become a success, become joyful. And I think here's where I'm going to put, it comes in earlier in the book, this idea of everything is a product, but I think it, it fits here. I think that everything is a product is something we need to learn when we're entrepreneurs and we're growing a new business or we're going out and selling something that we've created. Um, so... Being diversified and being agile, which means being able to do more than one thing, um, and understanding your customers is how you get, or get used to this everything as a product. Uh, products are anything you can create. We can talk more about that if you like. Just email me. And, and set up a consultation. But stop and think about what you make. Stop and think about things that are similar to what you make or work together with it. And that's a product. And sometimes if you don't have the everything is a product um, partner thing that works, somebody else does. And that says to me that you should seek them out and maybe do something together. Okay, yes, no, maybe. 
there's a lot of information out there on the whole sales thing. And most of us would say we're not salespeople. I'm not a salesperson. I'm a creator. I'm an inventor. I'm a this. I have a business. I don't like to sell. You know, it's not true that if you build it, they will come. Yeah, as you create a better mousetrap, people will beat a path to your door. Not necessarily true. Overnight successes take a long time. And there are a lot of no's along the way. So what does she say? Joyce says, don't be so afraid of the no. Ah, you know, I say it's just a little rock in our shoe. You know, stop and take it out of your shoe and keep going. But Joyce's advice says, we can argue and turn the no into a yes, maybe. Or we can go to someone else, get them to say yes. As Ronnie, and Ronnie is a very good um, friend of hers, so let me read to you about Ronnie, because I thought this was fascinating. Uh, Ronnie is from uh, Chapter 18. Ronnie, who was president of the PTA for the entire school district, had flaming red hair and wore bright, high top sneakers with fluorescent laces. She was funny and delightful and she in, in uh, Joy decided that they would work together. And Ronnie would say, go over, under, around, or through. There are an infinite number of options available to us after we hear the word no. So the message here is never give up. I say choose your battles. Sometimes you take the no and you move on. You move on to that next person who will say yes and she knows it's there. Um, you can spend a little extra time trying to change the no to a yes with someone if you're really passionate and you really believe that they want to do it but they can't or why. Um, and it can be good practice for you. <laughs> but you know, it's your product, it's your idea, it's your passion. No is not, you know, not the answer. It's like Susan B. Anthony said, failure is not an option. The myth, here we are, the myth of the work-life balance. Seriously, it's a myth. For me, Joy tells us, there isn't any difference between business and life. There isn't one business joy and one mom joy. There's only joy. I operate under the same governing principles in all aspects of my life. I want to be a strong, kind, decent person who is forceful but fair. I can't work any other way. And don't we all want to do that? I think that um, we get the kind of decent part down pretty well. Women tend to be kind and decent. It's our nurturing nature. It certainly is a nurturing big ideas. Um, it's the strong, forceful, but fair part that can be a little difficult. Takes a little bit of practice maybe. Sometimes we're too strong, not fair, too forceful, not forceful enough. Sometimes it just Again, takes practice, but also takes thought and contemplation. And it might take bringing in another person to say, hey, am I being too hard here? What is your opinion of how this is going? And that's why we talk at Nurturing Big Ideas about having a team, uh, you know, someone you can trust, maybe three or four someones you can trust, having regular meetings with them. They will help you be forceful and fair um, and not so kind and decent that you throw the company out the window and give away everything. I think, you know, when we try to separate ourselves into uh, work or life or home, that that's uh, when we complicate manners and a lot of us stumble because we forget that there's just one else. You know, we bring us to work, we take us home, and they should be the same person. We know how to do different things. We're women. I like this part, of course. 
I talk about voice and nurturing big ideas. I talk about how your voice matters and your voice counts and you need to be using your voice. And voice is, is more than just what you speak. It's more than the sound coming out of your mouth. It's power and it does matter. And Joy um, says that her voice mattered in a particular part of the book where she was going through some trials and tribulations that you need to read the book and find out about. Um, she made her voice matter even when the chips were down. I think it mattered more when the chips were down. She refused to accept no or failure. And failure, if you think about it, she tells us, is just another experience in your life. They come and go. And she looks at failure as a chance to fill up her basket with resources. And this quote from Stephen King was one of many that she has in the back of her book. She has several pages of quotes that have helped her throughout her career and her life. And this one just meant a lot to me, uh, partly because Stephen King is one of my favorite authors, but also because it means a lot. I mean, he says, you can, you should, and if you're brave enough to start, you will. I know you're brave enough to start. I know you will. If you need a little help, I'm here for you. I hope you'll share this. I hope you go and get Joy's book. Um, again, Finding Joy, really one of the best books because it's a story from beginning to end. It's a story of how her, her ideas and the things that she wanted to do came to her and what she did with them and how she, she failed. She had problems, trials and tribulations. She never gave up. She has unbounding energy. God bless her. Um, and yet, what, I, what you need to take away from this is that your voice does matter. Um, failure is not an option. And you can. You should. And you will. And I'm here to help. Once again, this was Big Ideas and Books, a Nurturing Big Ideas book review with me, Yvonne DeVita, your Big Idea Facilitator. These are the things we do. These are the kinds of books that we like. I want you to uh, write and tell me your ideas and what you'd like to see more of or less of, or just give me a comment. Tell me whether or not these are useful to you. And if you have a book that you would like to be reviewed, write to me, especially at my email address, Yvonne at Yvonne DeVita, and include book review for Nurturing Big Ideas in the subject line. And that's all we have for today. We'll see you next time.